There's no question that your designs and theories are far advanced of anything that our research department has come up with. Your use of solar energy as an inexhaustible power supply is an excellent theory. But it has to be proved, as do all your other innovations. Everything I design and build works. Outside stands a missile, capable of safely transporting a man into space. And I've proved it. I've proved it time and time again. <laughs> Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You're watching PNT. I'm your host, grateful for each and every one of our viewers. Except you. You know who you are. Up front this week, according to an article published by CNN, a high-speed boat carrying tourists off the coast of Japan collided with a large marine creature injuring 87 passengers, some of whom had to be airlifted to a nearby hospital. Occurring in the waters off Japan's northwest coast, the sudden collision rocked the boat, sending passengers and crew flying. Later interviewed by officials, the crew of the high-speed cruiser told officials that the boat had struck a large object that appeared to be an unidentified marine creature. Coast Guard officials utilized both ship and aircraft to investigate the waters between Nijata and Sato Islands, where the collision occurred, but were unable to find any trace of the creature or the crash. While there is little doubt that this incident likely was a natural one involving a whale or other large sea life, it is worth noting that Japanese folklore contains references to a creature known as the Omibozu, a fearsome sea spirit known for appearing on calm waters before wreaking havoc on boats and unwary fishermen. While the origins of the Omibozu are shrouded in mystery, the legends agree on one point that chance encounters with the creature are deadly. From creature collisions to avian addictions, our next story in our weekly roundup of the weird takes us to India, where some local parrots have taken to nibbling on narcotics. According to an article by LiveScience.com, poppy farmers in Madhya Pradesh are fighting a losing battle against flocks of parrots who are eating and even making off with entire poppy flowers, the source of opium and most narcotics. The birds have become a menace to the farmers who are legally allowed to grow the plants, with some parrots being observed visiting the fields to chow down on their narcotic nosh more than 30 times in a day. With most poppy pods containing up to 20 grams of opium, it is no wonder that officials are concerned not only with the lost income from crop damage, but also the danger of the addicted birds, with some of them even going to extreme measures to get their fix. Farmers have resorted to scarecrows, live guards, shouting over loudspeakers, and even firecrackers to frighten the persistent parrots away, but to no avail. While poppy-stealing birds are not unknown in the area, this year has been particularly bad with low rainfall causing the birds to turn to their addictive alternatives when other food is not available. For PNT's part, we cannot help but admire the audacity of India's avian addicts, but we feel that the parrots' health and reputations would be better served by sticking to piracy. We'll be back with the final part of our program in just a moment. But first, a word from our sponsor. What happens when you breathe on a mirror? You can actually see your breath. But you cannot see whether it's fresh and clean and pleasing to other people. If you want to feel safe, use Micron. Micron Oral Antiseptic. The most effective mouthwash you can buy to stop bad breath germs. Welcome back! For the final part of our weekly roundup of the weird, PNT is pleased to bring you a compelling case drawn from the MUFON database. Filmed on February 23rd in Ypsilanti, Michigan, the footage appears to document one family's encounter 
with a strange craft emitting a high-pitched hum on or near Willow Run Air Base. Let's have a look and a careful listen to the footage. Are taking video? Yes, I'm taking video. You're dealing with a believer, so you gotta see this. I gotta see this. It's blinking. I've only seen one UFO in my life. Yeah, Dad, yeah, this is this is out of this world. Yeah. This is this is crazy. This is like something out of uh, X Files. <laughs> Seriously, this is something out of freaking X Files. Dealing with something that's not ours, Dad. No, I don't. This is not that. ours. This is freaky. This is it's no airplane or, or helicopter I've ever seen. Oh, you've seen some freaky ones before, right? Well, no, I, I know. I told you that. I, I yeah, yeah. back in 2009. Yeah, in 2000. hear a buzzing sound. You do? Yes. A high-pitched buzzing sound. That's the car. No. That's not the car. It's not there. It's not the car. Yeah, something's there.
hear a buzzing sound. You do? Yes. A high pitched buzzing sound. That's the car. No. It's not the car. It's out there. It's not the car. Yeah, something's there. So what were the strange flashing lights and mysterious hum recorded by one family this February near the Willow Run Air Base? Let's run down the possibilities. First, let's eliminate the painfully obvious. This is not a recording of birds, clouds, stars, meteors, flares, balloons, or drones. Unless it's a damn big drone. So that leads us to commercial and military aircraft. In this case, both are directly present at the encounter site, Willow Run Airport. Willow Run, also known as Air Force Plant 31, was built in 1942 in Michigan by the Ford Motor Company in order to produce the B-24 Liberator heavy bombers, with over 50% of all bombers in World War II coming from this plant. The plant and surrounding grounds were also used in the testing and development of advanced technology, with teams located on the base developing the first Ruby lasers and early anti-ballistic missile defenses. After the end of World War II, the plant and adjacent airfield were given into civilian hands, eventually becoming the Willow Run Airport, which operates primarily as a hub for small aircraft and cargo planes, and the remainder of most of the base, which became the Yankee Air Museum, covering over 47,000 square feet and showcasing historical and aviation displays. Knowing these facts, the most likely explanation for the events documented on the video is that of a private plane, a cargo flight, or even a vintage plane being moved from one hangar to another. An easily explainable event, on the surface. Was this just a simple case of misidentification of common airfield activity by over-eager witnesses, or was there more here than meets the eye? Let's go over the account a little more carefully. The witness states that they initially saw a flashing light in the woods near the airbase, a sight not out of the ordinary for this area. The witness, oddly, seems to go to great pains to document both the number and reactions of the deer in the area, noting that they seemed immobile before vanishing and only leaving one upon their return to the area. This is not unusual behavior for deer, either, who have long adapted to living on the outskirts of cities. Now, things do get interesting, however. The witness states that they then saw a boomerang-shaped craft above the trees. The accompanying sketch and the statement show a black-surfaced craft with orange lights along the perimeter, with two red and blue lights on the upper surface. The witness states that they attempted to follow the craft, but it had disappeared from view. They later believed that the craft had landed, seeing the flashing lights on the ground, which were pulsating at a rapid rate. As is seen on the last piece of footage, the flashing lights are visible in the distance, while the hum is clearly heard. The source of the hum is unclear, with it being more of a high-pitched electrical sound rather than the noise of the car engine, the lower pitch noise of a prop plane, or the far louder noise still of a jet engine, all of which are easily recognizable and do not match the noise heard on the tape. While this certainly is curious, it's also far from being definitive proof that the craft was the source of the noise, most likely instead being produced by a nearby electrical transformer or even the lighted power lines we see in the early parts of the footage. As to the witness themselves, 
There is little doubt that their reactions are those of someone witnessing an event that they cannot explain. This alone must carry some weight. As we are but vicarious passengers along for the ride, we must take the witnesses' reactions at face value, without data the contrary. Is it possible that instead of a string of easily accounted for events recorded by a predisposed witness, that this was, in fact, the record of an encounter with an otherworldly craft? If this is a UFO, then what is it doing on the ground inside an antiquated Air Force installation? An installation, it is worth repeating, that was home to the development of cutting-edge technologies during World War II. Is it possible that this sighting was somehow related to the secret projects undertaken there? There have long been rumors of UFO activity related to military installations from World War II onwards, with the UFO showing an inordinate interest in our developments, especially our nuclear and missile capabilities. Is that what we are seeing here? Have the craft that appeared worldwide during the early 1940s returned to check on our progress? Or perhaps to determine if we still pose a possible threat to the larger intergalactic community? Or an even more fantastic notion? That perhaps we are seeing now the results of experiments with interdimensional rifts, or perhaps even time travel. One only need look to the reports of the controversial Philadelphia Project and the CIA's MK Ultra Project in order for this chilling possibility to seem more and more likely. Uncomfortable food for thought. But whether or not the strange flashing lights and mysterious hum recorded last month by two Michigan residents was a misidentification of common aircraft, evidence of a secret military program gone awry, or something else entirely. We'll leave up to you to decide. Sound off in the comments section below with your thoughts. That's it for this time, faithful viewers. Be sure to click like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified when PNT presents your next portion of the paranormal. I'm your host, reminding you to keep an open mind, because a closed one shuts out the truth.